VPD is a real big focus for many growers these days. And I believe it's another thing you've studied in recent years, if I remember correctly, within the cultivation course at Utah State University that I did. You had mentioned something along the lines of the difference between being in that optimal VPD range versus just being outside of that range, kind of still in the tolerance range, is minuscule. Talk to us about your studies on VPD. Is that is VPD overrated? Yes. Um, in, in a nutshell, I always give a short answer, <laughs> but that's a short answer. Um, first of all, it's exciting that people even talk about this because that in the old days, we just said relative humidity. And it's much more sophisticated to talk about vapor pressure deficit. Um, and that's a nonlinear response. It's very much affected by temperature. Um, and so I teach that in classes. How do you calculate it? What's the difference between VPD and relative humidity? Um, and that's a well-studied science of psychometrics. You'd get that in heavy, heavy dose of that in an engineering class. Um, so it's exciting to see people talking about that because they it's a more nuanced understanding of what causes the evaporation of water. Um, having said that, VPD is important. Let's take Utah. We get humidities in Utah 10, 12 percent in the summer, um, relative humidities, really low in the hot summer days. And the plants are also out of water in the root zone if they're not irrigated. And now VPD is a big deal in the field because the plant's water stressed. But in a controlled environment, we work hard to keep the root zone water potential adequate. So in that case, the plant can stay better hydrated even at low humidity. And low humidity is the same as high VPD. So it's when I say it's overrated, it's overrated when the plants have ample water in the root zone. They're healthy plants and they got plenty of water. Um, the biggest single thing with VPD is keeping it low to reduce fungal activity and bacteria, keep mold counts low. That's huge. And there we'd like to keep it down at 60% relative humidity, which is about one kilopascal of VPD. But that's expensive. You got to have a lot of dehumidifiers to keep it that low. Um, it's rare that it gets too low because it's, it, the plants are transpiring. We got to be dehumidifying like crazy. Most of the time it gets too high. Um, and then we try and keep it down. Um, but yes, I know people even do phasic control, have the VPD of this, and then later in the life cycle, it can be this. And I didn't say it didn't affect the plants. It's just overrated. Um, and generally, we try to keep it at one kilopascal of, of VPD. Um, and, but, and we try to keep it uh, below one and a half kilopascals. If they start to get up to two kilopascals, that's pretty dry air. But that rarely happens anyway, because the plants are transpiring. And then if you start to get too low, down to 0.7 or 0.6 VPD, that's associated with the relative humidity of approaching 80%. And that now you're going to get diseases and, and increased mold counts. That's really bad. So. But the range for optimal is a little wider than people think. I would say 0.7 to 1.5 um, is, is a fairly broad optimum, with, with roughly 1 being, being, being the, the set point where you'd like to get to. Got it. And we know VPD is important during photosynthesis, during lights on. So many growers hear that and they actually conclude that VPD doesn't really matter at night during lights off. What's your thoughts on that? It matters at night because that's when we get quite um, low VPDs and, and high humidity and microbial growth. So it, we'd really like to keep it low at, at night. Um, but, but that, again, run the dehumidifiers. 
Here's a really important interaction with VPD. All of our plants in controlled environment agriculture ought to be supplemented with CO2. It, it really been, that's underrated. I mean, we should, some things are overrated, some things are underrated. We should always be elevating CO2. It's not that expensive and um, it'd be measuring it too by instruments. There's low cost instruments to measure CO2. When CO2 is elevated, the stomates close. That's a known thing. They don't have to be as open anymore. You're giving them plenty of CO2. And that further reduces the importance of VPD. The stomates are automatically more closed, so the plant's not going to dehydrate in low humidity anymore because CO2 is elevated. So that's an important interaction that's unique to indoor agriculture, where we have high CO2 and uh, we tend to have higher, higher uh, humidities, higher humidities and low VPD. This clip is brought to you by Vivo Sun. Use discount code MrGrow15 to save on any of their gardening products. Go to the full episode by clicking the outro card here, or click the link in the description section below. Catch you in the next video.